I'm Brendan Wong and you're watching Nightline. News making the headlines. Fourth year dead in Batu Feringi landslide. <laughs> Tun Dr. Mahathir vows stern action against those responsible for Pasi Gudang toxic pollution. Good morning. Four Myanmar nationals are feared dead after a landslide struck a construction site in Batu Feringi, Pulau Pinang, Tuesday night. State Environment Committee Chairman Phi Bun Po in a statement said the work site is located near the Lost Paradise Resort at the border of Batu Feringi and Tanjung Bunga. He added the incident took place around 9.25 p.m. He said the fire and rescue and civil defence teams have been mobilised for a search and rescue operation. Meanwhile, State Fire and Rescue Department Director Saadun Mokhtar said the search and rescue team have located the victims under a pile of earth about 4.5 metres deep and efforts to retrieve the victims is underway. Stern action will be taken against those responsible for causing air pollution in Pasir Gudang, Johor. Prime Minister Tun Dr Mahathir Mohamad stressed that the culprits must be identified and brought to book as such an incident should not have happened, especially after the Sungai Kim Kim episode in March. Sepatutnya selepas insiden yang dahulu dia tak berlaku lagi. Tetapi ternampak bahawa ada industri-industri yang tidak begitu prihatin terhadap keselamatan. Sebab itu kita perlu kenal pasti siapa yang mencemarkan iklim di situ dan kita ambil tindakan yang keras terhadap mereka. The Prime Minister was speaking to reporters after delivering his keynote address at the 33rd Asia-Pacific Roundtable in Kuala Lumpur on Tuesday. He said this in response to the latest pollution incident in Pasir Gudang, which caused many people to fall ill. In the incident at 3.30 p.m. last Thursday, 14 students of Taman Mawar Religious School and 13 pupils of Sekolah Kebangsa and Pasir Gudang Empat suffered breathing difficulties and vomiting, believed to be due to air pollution. As a result of the latest incident, all educational institutions in Pasir Gudang had been ordered to close until Thursday to allow authorities to work on cleaning the pollution. The latest episode resurfaced just three months after the Sungai Kim Kim toxic waste dumping incident, also in Pasir Gudang, which affected some 6,000 residents. Meanwhile, the Department of Environment has identified a waste processing factory in Pasir Gudang that has been ordered to dispose of its toxic waste immediately. Johor Health, Culture and Heritage Committee Chairman Muhammad Kuzar Abu Bakar said the factory was one out of 30 high-risk premises inspected by the DOE. Speaking to reporters at the Pasir Gudang Municipal Council on Tuesday, Kuzan declined to reveal the type of industries that the factories are involved in. Kita minta mereka keluarkan sama ada ianya ada sebahagian daripada kesinya atau tidak, kita lihat nanti selepas ini, selepas barang ini dikeluarkan daripada premises. As a precautionary measure, Kuzan said police have also been instructed to closely monitor the movement of toxic waste in and out of Pasir Gudang. Kuzan said as of Tuesday, the DOE together with the Department of Occupational Safety and Health, DOSH, and the Pasir Gudang Municipal Council, MPPG, will be carrying out an integrated operation to check on other premises in Pasir Gudang. He said the operation involves the inspection of 250 other premises to make sure that they adhere to the standard operating procedures set by the government. He also said that there were no new cases of victims suffering from air poisoning on Tuesday. In the meantime, the Fire and Rescue Department's Hazardous Material or Hazmat Management Unit has been carrying out continuous monitoring of the air quality in a 15-kilometer radius around the epicenter of the initial air pollution incident last Thursday. Hazmat teams were also carrying out close monitoring at 13 locations suspected of being affected by air pollution. Deputy Fire Superintendent Muhammad Idris said that they are also bringing in experts, technology and air monitoring devices from other states to assist in the monitoring system. So, makluman uh, sekarang ni kita tengah buat uh, kerja-kerja detection uh, di seluruh uh, kawasan kilang di Pasir Budang dan kita ada pecahkan empat tim lah uh, untuk detection. 
dan setiap uh, detection kita nanti uh, ambil antara tiga ke empat uh, spot lah uh, untuk kita buat uh, detection di sebelah pagi petang dan juga sebelah malam uh, untuk kita buat perbendingan adakah bacaan yang ada di setiap spot-spot ni masih tinggi ataupun berkurangan ataupun uh, sama saja lah jadi itu kita akan buat perbendingan dan uh, bacaan-bacaan ni pun kita akan kumpul dan uh, kemudian kita maklumat-maklumat ni kita akan uh, buat perbendingan dengan agensi-agensi uh, yang lain Kualiti udara ni telah kita jalankan bermula pada hari pertama operasi lagi. Maklumat yang telah kita dapat dan operasi atau untuk detection daripada udara, pencemaran udara ni telah kita buat berterusan sehingga sekarang. He said so far the air quality at the locations is normal. The identity of Malaysia Airlines as the national carrier will be retained even after it is sold off. Prime Minister Tun Dr. Mahathir Mohamad said the decision to sell the struggling airline was reached after numerous measures to introduce to improve its financial situation failed. Each time we make a change, they fail. So this time we have to be a little bit more careful in the steps we take to resuscitate the Malaysia airline. It's not just a change of management. Lots of other things are wrong. Uh, with, the, with the airline, which has to be corrected. The Prime Minister spoke to the media on the sidelines of the 33rd Asia-Pacific Roundtable in Kuala Lumpur on Tuesday. He was responding to a call by two Malaysia Airlines veterans, including a former CEO, for an overhaul of the airline's management after its failure to reach the top 20 of an international survey on airlines for the fifth consecutive year. The duo said Malaysia Airlines, which performed poorly in Skytrack's annual World's Top 100 Airlines survey, had lost its class. Meanwhile, in his keynote address at the 33rd Asia-Pacific Roundtable, Dun Dr. Mahathir said that the trade war between the United States and China has been most disappointing as it would negatively impact the rest of the world, inflicting collateral damage. He said that it had been a prospect of worsening into a long-term Cold War. If a country or region can deal with its own challenges successfully without creating problems for others, there is no need for external intervention. Sovereign nations generally do not like external intervention. Fruitful international relations are possible only when national circumstances are equally healthy. Then Dr. Mahathir said Malaysia had always subscribed to the idea that nations which may be opposed to each other find common ground and become partners in ventures and endeavors that would benefit both. Hostility and belligerence, he said, benefit no one except arms traders and war profiteers. Data Sri Ahmad Zahid Hamidi will be slapped with fresh corruption charges. The Malaysian Anti-Corruption Commission, MACC, said that it received the green light from the Attorney General's Chambers, AGC, to charge the former Deputy Prime Minister at the Kuala Lumpur Sessions Court on Wednesday and the Shah Alam Sessions Court on Thursday. In a statement on Tuesday, the MACC said that Datuk Sri Ahmad Zahid is expected to face several charges in both courts under the MACC Act 2009 and the Penal Code. It was reported that he is expected to face another 40 counts of corruption in connection with a case involving a private company that dealt with bringing Chinese tourists to Malaysia. This is on top of the 47 charges he is already facing. Fares for the Electric Train Services, ETS, will be reviewed. Deputy Prime Minister Dato Sri Dr. Wan Aziza Wan Ismail, who announced this on Tuesday, said the review will be conducted by abolishing fare control and implementing a dynamic fare structure. Cadangan menyeragam dan laksanakan jenis-jenis charge and fee perkhidmatan ke atas penggunaan terminal pengangkutan awam darat dan cadangan semakan terkadar tambang perkhidmatan electric train services, ETS, oleh Kementerian Pengangkutan uh, MOT. Ini adalah kerana uh, sampai sekarang, charge dan fee-nya tidak dikawal selia oleh mana-mana uh, oleh mana -mana, uh, pihak kerajaan. Jadi ini uh, meragamkan dan berikan kita supaya kita tingkatkan um, quality service. 
The DPM said this at a media conference after chairing the National Action Council on Cost of Living meeting in Putrajaya. She said the move was part of the council's decision to address the rising cost of living. The council also decided to rope in cooperatives to help in the implementation of the 100 basic goods program aimed at alleviating the rising cost of living. Tansri Megat Zaharuddin Megat Muhammad Noor is stepping down as the Federal Land Development Authority of Felda chairman due to health reasons. Prime Minister Tun Dr. Mahathir Mohamad said the government was informed that he was unwell. He was appointed as the chairman on July 26 last year. In a statement by Felda, it said the new chairman will be announced by Economic Affairs Minister Datsri Mohammad Azmin Ali in the near future. FGV Holdings Barat shareholders, including three of its largest, have rejected resolutions pertaining to the payment of fees and benefits to the company's directors, although the amount is still the same as before. Chairman Datuwira Azhar Abdul Hamid said the key dissenting shareholders were the Federal Land Development Authority, Felda, with 33.7%. Koprasi Pramodala and Felda Malaysia Berhad, KPF, 5%, and the Armed Forces Fund Board, LTAT, 1.25%. Speaking to reporters after FGV's annual general meeting on Tuesday, Dato Azhar said a total of 12 resolutions were submitted at the AGM. It is the biggest shareholder that didn't approve the resolution 123, along with KPF and LTAT. EPF, uh, EPF actually voted four. Four, four. EPF voted four. Although they raised a letter, you know, concerning the uh, director's remuneration, but they actually voted four resolution one, two, three. Shareholders controlling 64.44% of shares shot down the resolutions to approve the payment of 2.55 million ringgit in director's fee for the financial year ended December 31st, 2018 the payment of a portion of director's fees up to 1.18 million ringgit and the payment of certain benefits such as meeting allowances. Because the irony here is different. The resolution relating to the re-election was passed. But the resolution relating to director's fees were all uh, not approved. So in short, the, the, the initial message is we want you to work but we're not paying you. Fourteen locals nabbed during online gaming raid. Details when we return. Welcome back. The civil forfeiture filed by the Malaysian Anti-Corruption Commission, MACC, against 41 individuals and entities is just the tip of the iceberg. Finance Minister Lim Guan Eng said he believed there were far more entities, including companies, individuals, press associations, which involve reporters and photographers from newspapers. Menimbang untuk kembalikan ni lah. Tak payah tunggu SPRM untuk beku akaun ataupun keluarkan senar. Bila, bila SPRM keluarkan senar, eh, akaun akan dibuka. So saya, kalau, dengan cara ini akan lebih memudahkan. Tapi tentu mereka mesti tidak terlibat lah. Nah kalau dia terlibat itu pulangkan wang saja. Kalau terlibat itu cerita lain. Pulangkan wang pun akan kena tindakan juga. He was met at the Inland Revenue Board's Hari Raya Idil Fitri celebration in Putrajaya on Tuesday. However, he said he was not sure if the MACC would be drawing up a new list. Meanwhile, Lim also confirmed that the government has no intention of introducing new taxes in the upcoming 2020 budget, especially inheritance tax. 
However, he said the government did propose ways to increase its tax revenue, including via the Special Voluntary Disclosure Program, which allows taxpayers to voluntarily declare any unreported income, including income kept in offshore accounts. Untuk belanjawan akan datang. Kita tak jangka uh, akan ada itu cukai-cukai baru lah. Kecuali itu cukai-cukai sampingan uh, ekoran daripada belanjawan 2019. So khusus ni ada udara cakap kita nak uh, buat inheritance tax. So nak sini cakap tidak ada tidak ada hasrat <laughs> untuk laksanakan inheritance tax. Speculation about the introduction of inheritance tax has been swirling since prior to the tabling of the 2019 budget, which the market feared would discourage investors' interest, especially on Bursa Malaysia. The motion to lower the voting age from 21 to 18 will be tabled in the Dewan Rakyat during the July sitting. Election Commission Chairman Azha Aziz and Harun said if the motion is passed, many more youths and students of institutions of higher learning, including government polytechnics, will be eligible to vote in the next general election. Itu saya difahamkan akan dibentangkan di Parlimen. Okay akan dibentangkan di Parlimen pada sesi Parlimen Julai ini. Uh, saya rasa pembentangan pertama ialah 4, 4 Julai. 4 hari bulan Julai insyaAllah uh, akan dibentangkan di Parlimen. Uh, dan akan melalui proses uh, uh, Parlimen yang seperti biasalah untuk meminta perlembagaan persekutuan. Azhar told this to the media after launching the Vote Education Program with Kuching Polytechnic in Sarawak on Tuesday. He said until the first quarter of this year, there were still 3.8 million youths yet to register as voters, although they have reached the eligible age. 14 locals were arrested when police raided an illegal gambling den at a high-end condominium in Bandar Utama on Tuesday. Among those detained was a woman who was suspected to being part of an online gambling syndicate. All the suspects between the ages of 18 and 61 were in two condominium units, which were their base of operations in Bandar Utama, Petaling Jaya, when police raided the premises. The 7.30 a.m. operation was carried out by the Bukit Aman Anti-Vice Gambling and Secret Societies Division, or D7. Its principal assistant director, Dato Rohaimi Mat Isa, said police had been carrying out surveillance for a month and found that the syndicate had been operating since last year. He said the gambling syndicate had been making up to 2 million ringgit a month. He added that the suspects will entice gamblers with promotions through WhatsApp and Facebook. Initial investigation revealed that the suspects were paid between 2,400 and 4,000 ringgit. Among items seized during the raid were 12 sets of computers and 22 mobile phones. The case is being investigated under Section 4, Subsection 1C of the Common Gaming Houses Act, 1953. The chief executive officer and a manager of a government-linked company have been remanded for four days by the Alustar Magistrates Court to facilitate investigations into the awarding of solid waste management contracts in Kedah and Perlis. The remand order against the two, aged 50 and 34 respectively, was issued by Assistant Registrar Rashida Azmi. The case is being investigated under Section 16 of the Malaysian Anti-Corruption Commission Act 2009. In Selangor, a married couple pleaded guilty on Tuesday in the Klang Magistrates Court to a charge of providing obscene services through the WeChat application. Judge Razali Arifin set 23rd July for sentencing while awaiting for the forensic report on the accused handphone. Muhammad Saruddin Basri, aged 23, and his wife, Nur Shafizan Shamsuddin, 24, admitted to using the application to provide obscene communication for commercial purposes. They were charged under Section 233, Subsection 3 of the Communication and Multimedia Act read together with Section 34 of the Penal Code. In Pahang, five men were charged at the Kuantan Magistrates Court on Tuesday over a fight in front of a fast food restaurant near the Sungai Isap River last week. Four of them pleaded guilty, while another pleaded not guilty and claimed trial. Each were imposed with a 1,000 ringgit fine in default of one month in jail. The court set bail at 1,000 ringgit and fixed July 11th for re-mention of the case. Iran-US crisis goes from bad to worse. Details after this breather.
On to the foreign front. Iran on Tuesday sharply criticized new U.S. sanctions targeting its supreme leader, Ayatollah Ali Khomeini, and other top officials, saying the measures spelled the permanent closure for diplomacy between the two nations. The sanctions follow Tehran's downing of the U.S. surveillance drone over the Straits of Hormuz last week. According to its president, Hassan Rouhani, the sanctions against Khomeini were outrageous and idiotic, especially as the 80-year-old cleric has no overseas assets and no plans to ever travel to the U.S. Meanwhile, Iran's foreign ministry spokesman, Abbas Musavi, labeled the move as desperate and is destroying the established international mechanism for maintaining world peace and security. However, Trump's national security adviser, John Bolton, insisted the president remained open to real negotiations and is leaving the door open for Iran to walk through. And in the United Kingdom, Boris Johnson, the leading contender to become Britain's next prime minister, said on Tuesday it would be bizarre if the European Union EU opted to impose tariffs on British goods in the event of a no-deal Brexit. The former London mayor told a radio phone-in that Britain must get ready to come out without an agreement and the EU should match his plan not to impose any tariffs under such a scenario. During the radio phone-in, the 55-year-old also delved further into his Brexit strategy, saying that he wants to take the serviceable bits of Theresa May's withdrawal agreement while scrapping the backstop provision hated by ardent Brexiteers intended to keep the Irish border open. Johnson added that he would withhold paying the EU to EU Britain's 50 billion US dollar bill, which, while the two sides negotiate a free trade agreement during an implementation period, prolonging current terms. Action from the Super League. Stay tuned. Sports football, the Super League. Three matches were played on Tuesday night. Pera Edge felt a United 3-2. PKNP drew 2 all with PKNSFC, whilst Lango trashed Pahang 5-2 thanks to a hat-trick by Ifedayo Olusegan. Kyril Muhaimin opened the scoring in the 30th minute before Olusegan scored twice to give Selango a 3-0 lead in the first half. Andrik Dok Santos made a 4-0 after the break before Pahang reduced the deficit through goals from Pogileswaran and Mamadou Sumera to make it 4-2. Any hope of a comeback for the visitors was then diminished when Oli Segan completed his hat-trick in the 86th minute, sealing a 5-2 victory for the hosts. The win lifted Slango to third place in the standings. And still on football, the 2019 Copa America. Uruguay sealed their place in the quarterfinals following a 1-0 win over Holders Chile in their final Group C match on Monday. The only goal in the game came late in the match when Edinson Cavani glanced across from Jonathan Rodriguez into the net in the 82nd minute to break the deadlock. 
The win saw them snatch top spot in Group C at the opponent's expense and set up a quarter-final meeting with Peru. While Chile came in second on six points and having to settle for a more challenging last eight fixture with Colombia. Self-driving carts, which can carry your shopping or packed shelves, are becoming popular in France. Formerly known as automatic guided vehicles, these new machines have been designed to work around the clock and provide a safe work environment on warehouse floors. Take a look as Nightline wraps up this time around. I'm Brandon Wong. Good night.